So Paul, in his, his letter to the Ephesians, or the, the Philippians, I should say, told them to let that mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Let that mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. So what is that? What's this mind that we're talking about here? Okay. In order to get a, an understanding of the mind of Christ, which is what we're talking about, the Christ consciousness, we have to kind of talk a little bit about what is Christ? What's the Christos? What is this that we refer to when we say Christ Jesus? Jesus was the Christ. Jesus was Christed that all of us are on the path of spiritual evolution that leads us to Christhood. What does that mean? What is the Christ? St. John, in the very first uh, chapter, says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And it goes on to further describe that, as that this was light, and that light was the life of everyone. Without that light, there's no life. That light is not merely a high vibrational energy of some kind that we perceive ocularly because of our relationship to that vibration. It's a particular frequency and so they see it as light. It's alive. It's conscious. It's aware. The word then, as we just said in the daily prayer, the Word took flesh, and the great being of the Christos was born. The flesh of the Word is light. And the flesh of the Word is light. And so we can keep taking this back further and further. What is the Word, and where did the Word come from, and why, and so on. But suffice it to say for right now that we're talking about an extension of the great one the nameless one, the extension of that being into creation. And the very first expression of that extension is this word, which is light, which is alive, which is aware, which is the connective tissue between the source and all manifestation. Okay. Now we're talking about the Christ. What is the Christ? The Son of God. That's the S-O-N or the S-U-N of God. The being in whom we live and move and have our being. And so all the things that we believe are real and solid and that are concrete material reality, we know even through science that are really manifestations of, of energy, that there's nothing really solid. Okay. We perceive things as solid because of our vibrational relationship to them. We're at this place on the continuum, the, the frequency continuum, and everything here looks solid. Everything here is immaterial, doesn't have solidity, is either sound or light or spirit. Okay. So we get a sense of this fluidity that we're living in that this distance between where I'm standing and where you're sitting is not empty space. Okay, we say, oh yeah, duh, you know, it's, it's got oxygen and nitrogen and it's got there's molecules and atoms and of course it's not empty space. 
Beyond that, it's not empty. Where does, where does your body end? Is it at the surface of your skin? Where does the body of the sun end? We look in the sky and we see a disk, an orb, and we say, oh, there's the sun. That's the physical body there. That's the edge of it. And we are so many miles away from the sun. And everything in between is empty space. Again, this idea of empty space. And we know that there's a corona around the sun. That if you, you know, have a total solar eclipse, that all of a sudden you see this corona around it. And you say, well, okay. Then that's where the edge, the edge of that corona is where the, the sun ends. And then there's all this empty space and then there's Earth. And then I'm on Earth somewhere. But wait a minute. When the sun's out, I feel it on my skin. It illumines my world. It brings life to plants, which generate oxygen, which is not another mystery. What is oxygen? And we just use these terms cavalierly because they're on a periodic table. We said, ah, I know what it is then. So if the, if the warmth and light and life-giving essence of the sun is knowable and feelable and discernible here, is the sun's body not extending this far? Where does your body end? Now we're getting kind of a sense of what that means. Let that mind be in you which was in Christ Jesus. We're talking about a being in whom the consciousness of connection with the creative source of all things exists. And at the very same time, a consciousness and awareness of Connection with all that is created, all manifestation. Like I said, like this connective tissue that is itself alive and aware. That is this body of light. That is the flesh of the Word. So if we're getting just a little bit out of our comfort zone in terms of how we perceive ourselves and perceive the world around us, that's a wonderful thing. And the more that we can do that, the, the better. But how do we go about this process of letting that consciousness, this Christ consciousness, the consciousness of connectivity with everything seen and unseen, the simultaneous consciousness, I should say, of everything that is with, uh, seen and unseen. How do we let that be in us? I found a clue. Okay, from... Uh, from John 15. As I'm reading this, <clears throat> hear it with the ears of this other consciousness. Okay. Here we have the Christ. 
telling us something. I am the true vine, and my Father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit he taketh away, and every branch that beareth fruit he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit, for without me ye can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered, and men gather them, and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things that I have spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. This is my commandment, that ye love one another as I have loved you. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Ye are my friends, and if ye do whatsoever I command you. Henceforth, I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends. For all things that I have heard of my Father I have made known unto you. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and ordained you, that you should go forth and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. These things I command you, that ye love one another. Is the life that's in a vine, and I, I live out in wine country, so I get to see all the vineyards now, right? And I should also say that when they prune all the vines and, and, and the trees and the orchards and all that, and they let it all dry out and, all those, and they burn it, it's not because they're mad. Okay. Nobody's punishing nobody. Okay. Is the life that's coursing through, the sap that's coursing through, these branches any different than the vine, than what's coursing through the vine? Of course not. They're connected. It's, they're an extension of. The vine extends itself into the branches. How silly would it be for the branch to somehow say, Whoa, wait a minute, I'm going to be my own vine. I don't need that. We can talk about cuttings and clonings and all that kind of stuff like that. <laughs> and if a deer comes running through the, pit of the, uh, the vineyard and damages some of the branches and they can no longer receive that life-giving essence from the vine, then they're not of any use anymore. 
they either have to be mended and bound together until it kind of heals itself, or you got to take it off and make room for new growth. Because the vine knows only one thing, extend itself in new growth. I am the vine, you are the branches, we're told. The same life, energy, substance, consciousness moves through everything. We are extensions of the great nameless one. We don't have to do anything heroic or spectacular in order for us to let that mind be in us which was also in Christ Jesus. It is already the case. It could be no way, no other way. It's a joke. <laughs> It could be no other way. So we are approaching the crucifixion and the resurrection that we celebrate on Good Friday and then on, on Easter. This is either religious mumbo-jumbo that's been perpetuated and inflicted on a humanity by power-mongering priests and cardinals and popes and whomever else. Or there's something else going on that's all, always been there too. Not to say that that other thing didn't happen. There's power-mongering and all that manipulation is going to happen wherever you have people that haven't woken up yet. We're not awake, we're subject to the same dream, and that same dream is me. What can I get out of this for me? Okay. And we know that there is something else. That we're talking about the living symbolism of the Christ affixing itself to the cross of matter. This is ancient symbolism that predates Jesus' time this is the, a reality that is uh, coexistent um, with observations of the uh, solar cycles and the equinoxes and, and solstices. The observation of what the, is happening energetically in the earth at these times and realizing that the old adage of as above, so below is extremely pertinent. That if it exists in our observable world, it exists in us. And it's not just a matter of the physics of light waves traveling at 186,000 miles per second or whatever they're going to come up with. It's not that. The Christ is in you because you are the branch attached to the vine. And so the key to all of this and the understanding of the mysteries and why we would do any of this, the communion or celebrating Easter or Christmas or any of that, comes with connecting with that consciousness of the mind of Christ. And the key to that connection we're given, it's really simple, love one another as I have loved you. Because what is love other than an extension of self? 
We are loved into existence. We are loved in maintaining existence. We are extensions of the One. Not separate, but extensions of the One. And our only job is to continue the process of extension. That's all that we have. Not because we're smart, not because we're clever, not because we've got great words to throw on it, not because we've read a lot of books about the mysteries or the religions or whatever it is, but because we can feel the life-giving force from the core of us pulsing through and out. And that's all. Love one another as I have loved you. There's nothing that we have to do in that. We merely have to stop doing everything that isn't that. Okay. Oh, Creator, Let the reality of the living Word, this great being in whom we do live and move and have our being itself, let that reality be driven home to each of us, that we may be shaken awake from the sleep of man and may experience that greater consciousness as we approach the vernal equinox and the crucifixion and resurrection that we celebrate. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.